Okay, guys, now let's discuss about esophageal tumors. Esophageal tumors. Now, how many types of tumors do you think will be present in the esophagus? Benign tumors as well as the malignant ones. Now, let's begin with the benign ones. The most common benign tumor. The most common benign tumor of esophagus is leomyoma. Okay, so leomyomas are the most common benign tumors, they are not the cancers. Then, what is the most common malignant tumor? The most common malignant tumor is squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus. Squamous cell carcinoma. Okay, the squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus. Already in the previous video of Barrett's esophagus, I have discussed that the squamous cell carcinoma, yes, it is the most common esophageal cancer. And what is the most common site? The most common site is going to be middle one third. Middle one third of the esophagus. And if someone asks you, what is the most common site of esophageal cancer in India? Okay, most common site of esophageal cancer in India. Again, the answer it remains, the uh, remains the same. It's the middle one third. Okay, so after this, what else you should know the other variety the other variety of the esophageal cancer is something called as adeno adeno carcinoma of esophagus okay so there are two types of variants one is the squamous cell carcinoma which is the most common also the adeno carcinoma of the esophagus now this adeno carcinoma of the esophagus already we have seen in the Barrett's esophagus, what is the most common site? The most common site, it is going to be lower one third. Okay, lower one third of the esophagus. And you know, it is a complication because of the GERD. The gastroesophageal reflux disease is going to cause Barrett's esophagus. Barrett's esophagus may turn into adenocarcinoma. Right? Now, after this, let us discuss about the esophageal cancer, what are the risk factors. Now, risk factors. Now, which people can actually get this esophageal cancer one by one? For risk factor number one is smoking. Okay, smokers, alcoholism. and nutrient deficiencies like vitamin A, C, E deficiency. See, these are the uh, antioxidants, right? These are the antioxidants which are present in the body. If you have deficiency of any of these antioxidants, vitamin deficiencies, okay? Not only these vitamin deficiencies, minerals like molybdenum, Zinc, selenium. Okay, so deficiencies of molybdenum, zinc, selenium, vitamin deficiency, smoking, alcoholism. Not only this, let me add important things like achalasia cardia. Okay, I hope you still remember what we have discussed about the achalasia cardia, where the uh, relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter is not happening properly okay so that the patient is having dysphagia there is progressive dysphagia we have discussed right so echelasia even in the topic of echelasia cardia also we have discussed having echelasia cardia increases the risk of esophageal carcinoma next six barrett's esophagus okay barrett's esophagus mainly increases the risk for adenocarcinoma of the esophagus okay and GERD gastroesophageal reflux disease and seventh this is a very important there is something called as a plumar vincent syndrome plumar vincent syndrome 
which is also called as a Patterson Kelly syndrome. See, this Plummer Vincent syndrome, the patient is going to have a triad of symptoms. Three symptoms will be there for the patient. What are they? Here I have shown. See, this is the endoscopy of the esophagus where you can see this is not a Shatsky's ring. Shatsky's ring, that's a concentric complete ring. See, here you can see this is the esophageal web, a web in the esophagus. So, this is called as the esophageal web. And you can see here the patient in this smear, the patient is having hypochromic RBC, microsoitic hypochromic RBCs because of the iron deficiency. And here the tongue is almost like a beefy tongue, beefy red tongue because of the atrophic glossitis. So, the point what I am trying to put into your mind is, see there is this syndrome called as a plumar vincent syndrome. In this plumar vincent syndrome, those who ever get the plumar vincent syndrome, they are at a risk of developing esophageal cancer. Now, in this plumar vincent syndrome, what are the trad of symptoms that are going to be seen? The trad of symptoms which are seen here are, let me write, esophageal web. Okay, so this esophageal web, yes, this is the risk factor for cancer, it's a risk factor. Okay, many times this was asked, esophageal web is a risk factor for esophageal cancer. Uh, there will be iron deficiency anemia. Okay, along with that atrophic glossitis, the patient is going to have atrophic glossitis. Okay, now any other risk factors other risk factors include certain infections like hpv infections in endemic areas not everywhere hpv human papilloma virus infections okay in endemic areas these are the important risk factors for getting esophageal cancer now whenever you do investigation the investigation uh, whenever you do the barium swallow here you can very clearly see here this is the normal esophagus okay, this is the normal esophagus with the normal lumen barium is consistently growing through that, going through the lumen but here you can see a space occupying lesion so this is the area of the cancer okay this is the area where the cancer is present this is the area of the cancer because of the space occupying lesion so now down to it the barium is flowing down and it looks like a rat tail rat tail so esophageal cancer is going to show rat tail appearance okay and barium swallow let me write here. Okay, investigation on barium swallow. There will be rat tail appearance. So, these are some important points which I want you to know. Okay, now look here. Whenever we do biopsy, okay. So, whenever we see a space occupying lesion or a mass, definitely we are going to order for the biopsy. Now, we have taken the biopsy and we have sent for the histopathological examination. And in the histopathological, histopathological examination, especially in case of squamous cell carcinoma, what we can see here is, see, are you able to see this nest-like appearance? Here, you can see nests, right? So, they are called as keratin pearls, okay? What we can see on biopsy, okay, let me write here, nest-like structures, nest the tumor cells they are arranging the concentric rings so that they are looking like nest like okay nest like structures are seen along with the presence of keratin okay why because the keratin keratin is a marker we have already discussed keratin is a marker of the epithelial cells Okay, epithelial cells. So, keratin pearls or the keratin is a marker of the squamous cell carcinomas also. Okay. And what else you need to know uh, regarding this squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus. In squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus, let me write here. Squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus. The patient is also going to have certain paraneoplastic syndromes. Okay, paraneoplastic syndrome or the paraneoplastic features like hypercalcemia. Okay, the patient can experience the hypercalcemia because this cancer, this esophageal cancer might produce parathyroid hormone related peptide. Okay, something similar to the parathyroid uh, hormone. So, this parathyroid hormone, we know it increases the blood levels of the calcium. 
what i'm trying to put into your mind is if a patient okay if he develops the esophageal cancer okay if he develops the esophageal cancer especially squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus this cancer cells they usually produce different different types of hormones this squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus will also produce parathyroid hormone related peptide which will cause elevation of the blood calcium levels that's the hypercalcemia is a paraneoplastic feature okay that's the important mcq and regarding adenocarcinoma of the esophagus uh, i no need to tell anything okay let me write here some important points adenocarcinoma so the important points what is the most important risk factor most important risk factor already you know it's a barrett's esophagus and gerd first gerd leading to barrett's esophagus but Bar barrett's esophagus is the one which can directly lead to the esophageal cancer uh, adenocarcinoma of the esophagus okay barrett's esophagus is the best thing okay but how you will get the barrett's esophagus is because of the gastroesophageal reflux a disease now which gene mutations can actually cause this adenocarcinoma of the esophagus let me write here gene mutations seen are associated are p53 gene mutations are retinoblastoma rb gene mutations okay retinoblastoma gene mutations are seen what is the most common site the most common site is being the lower one third of the esophagus lower one third and what are the types how many types are there see the variants are going to be two types are there intestinal type with many many glands okay glands are going to be seen the goblet cells are going to be rich in number or diffuse type okay there are two types okay so intestinal type is one and the diffuse type is one in diffuse type i want you to know there is presence of the signet ring cells signet ring cells are going to be present signet ring cells are going to be seen in intestinal type more glands glands are going to be seen so these are some important points which you need to know regarding the endocarcinoma of the esophagus now just have let's have a recap okay esophageal cancers what's the most common type it's a squamous cell carcinoma most common type. what's the most common site middle one third of the esophagus in india what's the most common site middle one third of the esophagus adenocarcinoma seen in the lower one third of the esophagus adenocarcinoma is seen after barrett's esophagus why barrett's esophagus it's because of the gerd gastroesophageal reflux disease can lead to barrett's esophagus barrett's esophagus can lead to adenocarcinoma of the esophagus how many types of adenocarcinoma of the esophagus are there there are two types of adenocarcinoma one is the diffuse type and intestinal type diffuse type you can see the signet ring cells okay filled with the mucin because that signet ring appearance is because of the uh, cells which are having a lot of mucin and intestinal type you are having lots and lots of glands what are the risk factors for squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus smoking alcoholism okay uh, zinc deficiency molybdenum deficiency selenium deficiency vitamin a deficiency vitamin c vitamin e deficiency as well as certain viruses viral infections like uh, human papilloma viral infection and this uh, esophageal cancers are associated with those conditions where you have the esophageal web like plummer vinson syndrome where the person is uh, plummer vinson syndrome or the patterson kelly syndrome where the person is going to suffer with the esophageal web atrophic glossitis as well as the iron deficiency anemias not only that even those people uh, who are drinking very hot substances like a very hot tea even they are at risk of developing the esophageal cancers okay remember that point so with this important points about the esophageal cancer are completed and the different types of esophageal ca uh, cancers everything is completed hope the video is helpful thank you